capture event sourcing and event notification and CQRS and other one is um, event state transfer carrier. Yeah. And yeah. And Git is based on kind of event sourcing, which after I mean learned about it, it sounds like amazing. Mm -hmm. I don't about I don't know about this like how Git works. Now I actually know it is based on event driven architecture. That is is really interesting. I look forward to watching that talk a lot actually because um I think the the Tekton client plugin is really interesting and then all the cloud events, like the cloud events plugin is really interesting. And then there's a number, there's a number of areas where cloud events and trying to standardize on cloud events in CI CD pipelines is really coming forward. So it, it's helpful for me even to have this uh, resource. I'm quite excited actually. Thank you. Yeah. I'll just put it in our meeting notes here. you have any um, questions on the work you're doing for GSOC? Sako? Um, currently, no, but um, I'm just exploring um, about the project itself. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi, Vibhav. How are you? Sure. Hey, Karo. Hey, Karo. It's all good. I'm good. No, hi. And actually, if you about this is um, this is really interesting. Sagar has just shared a link to a talk on giving some context and better understanding around event-driven architecture, which is one of the things I had really. Which I is actually Webov shared to me. Which actually Webov shared to me. Oh, he shared with you. Okay, perfect. Great. Yeah. That's what I wanted I, for your GSOC proposal. Yeah. So, so I added the your uh, uh, link to the. So I created a PR just right now uh, okay. for study links for the Cloud Events plugin and I uh, opened the PR to uh, the idea doc. So Perfect. Okay, I'll get that merged and that's great. That's really, really good. Yeah. I also just uh, opened a PR for a pr proposal for Cloud Events plugin. Sorry, I mean Tekton client plugin. Uh, so that is also up. And uh, I did a bit of brainstorming over the week, like not too much, but uh, of how this uh, Tekton as a code could, uh, that format could help us. I got a bit of understanding of how the Tekton as a code worked. Uh, it's actually pretty straightforward. And uh, most of the action items I think are uh, almost covered. I, uh, so for today, I just want uh, want to get the discussion ahead with Tekton client plugin, maybe, uh, so we could uh, you know set in stone what would be the aim for the um, uh, GSOC project, and also uh, probably uh, if we could discuss the timeline for GSOC because uh, yesterday I looked at the timeline for GSOC. Seems like it's close to three months for coding. Yes, so GSOC will be over a 10 week coding period, but the amount of hours demanded of students is, is greatly reduced this year. So it'll be 175 hours, which is roughly half what it usually is. Um, and that's just kind of acknowledging that this year is very different. And I think the GSOC organizers wanted to try something different that could make the time of GSOC more flexible for students and mentors. Um, so the idea is that there isn't a lot of flexibility built into that 10 weeks. So if students have exams, they can take a couple of weeks off for exams. If they have a personal event or something they need to spend time on, they can do that. And, and the idea is that students and mentors would work together to decide when would be the focused work during that 10 week period. The only constraints on that are that um, GSOC does wanna see a halfway point um, they would like a review of the students work and they would like roughly half of the work to be done so uh, the mentor and student can't decide to basically um, end load the work so the last five weeks all the work would get done and that wouldn't work from GSOC's point of view 
Um, but other than that constraint, there's a lot of flexibility within those 10 weeks. That sounds good. Okay. I was under the impression that uh, it is week based and I didn't consider the hour based. Uh, yeah. Then, yeah, that makes sense. Then there's, a, there's uh, still a lot less of time. Yeah, so, and I uh, guess from a mentor's perspective, it makes sense to think of it week based because you're probably thinking, I'll see my mentee once or twice a week. But maybe some weeks you won't and then i guess as a mentor too you can say look i have to do this thing this week so we can meet this week so you have some flexibility as well um but uh yeah it, it's i think the 175 hours is important to keep in mind when thinking about what your student will realistically be able to get done during that time so really with scoping the project I'm trying that, to. That would be the uh, thing that we'd, we'd be trying to optimize for them. Yes, we will. Um, I'm just pulling up your. Excellent. Your proposal. And then I'll share my screen. Great. Hmm. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So I can also see that I need to fix some links. I'll just do that. Okay, that's fine. Great. So right now your scope is the project requires the student to start with plugin development from scratch and then work with understanding how to use the cloud events, Java SDK to create and read events. Okay. And the student will start with work on understanding Jenkins plugin development. Um, yes. I think I, okay, okay, one, one sec. I think I copied the wrong stuff. Okay. Yeah, the same let, sentence let, let is like fix. twice on that. Yeah, same thing is all twi twice. Yeah. So um, let let me fix this. Uh, so I need to fix this and the links. I didn't copy the quick start properly. Let okay, me fix this. That's fine. So yeah, um, like um, uh, when I started with Jugin, plug, uh, Jenkins, first I like made my uh, like scratch plugin using tutorial on Jenkins. And today I'm just playing. First, I, then I learned about this um, uh, event-driven architecture, and today I'm playing uh, with the um, cloud cloud events, um, Java SDK as per do docs. Yeah. Awesome. How are you finding the cloud events Java SDK? It's on the doc. If you see, um, it's on the doc. Yes. No. No. I mean, how are you? How is your experience with it? Oh yeah. So um, I find one ja Discord server of Java where I'm just posting my question and they are helping me also. And uh, um, uh, um, but um, speaking of that, other than that, I never worked with networking in Java, so it's also new for me. But it's interesting because. I love Java. There is Java. Networking Java. Java. Good. You're in the right project then. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a good start. The cloud events uh, community is uh, really good. Even though I haven't interacted with them enough, they have a Discord channel. No, no, no. That's just a uh, um, Java server. This is a Java server. I mean, just a normal Java server from Discord, not from cloud events, like specifically. Um, hmm. Java server, as in, you mean you created a Java server which uses cloud events? Uh, no, I mean a community of Java developers. Oh, OK. Oh, you're talking yeah. about the, the community on Discord, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
that's what i'm saying so the, uh, they are a great community and probably uh, we'll uh, interact with them at some point to understand uh, some best practices for cloud events so but what wrong next there is any SB, is there is any by the way is there any guitar for cloud events like there is one for jenkins is there is any guitar or any specific group oh. i didn't find any link in the docs um, there, there is no guitar uh, I, uh, for cloud events plugin right now no there's a cloud events um there's this sig has a guitar channel yeah so cloud native sig would be uh, where we could discuss everything. Uh, can, so, um, can I get that link if, if you like, if you, uh, you're already part of that, uh, guitar, I think. Oh. Let me check. Mm, no. Yeah. Let, let me send it to you. Yeah. Yeah. And Vibhav, what, what do you need from us for this proposal? How can we help you narrow it down or define the scope? For the Tecton client plugin? Uh, yeah. Uh, so for this proposal, uh, yeah, I, I was thinking of how we could narrow it down earlier this uh, week uh, and later uh, today, uh, and later today, not later today, uh, early today. So, uh, I was thinking of focusing on one particular aspect of the cloud events plugin. And uh, this is the, uh, this part we, we've been discussing for a long time about the DSL bits, the tech, dot tecton folder bits, uh, which can be used, uh, you know, to tecton, uh, trigger tecton pipelines through Jenkins. So I was thinking of narrowing it down to uh, the DSL for a uh, Tecton and uh, having dot Tecton folder support. So what Tecton as a code does is it, uh, when, when a PR is opened, it checks uh, if uh, there is a dot Tecton folder. So it triggers, first of all, what it does is if there is a Tecton trigger enabled for the repo, it, uh, the trigger will uh, trigger a Tecton task, which will check if uh, there is a dot Tecton folder in the uh, repo. And then it will apply all those uh, YAMLs, the pipeline YAMLs, pipeline run YAML, which are needed to uh, run the Tecton pipeline. So I was initially thinking that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it isn't as straightforward, but turns out it is pretty straightforward uh, of how it works. What we could do is uh, we could uh, keep the document Tecton folder, but in the Jenkins file, uh, we we can provide parameters for uh, what the uh, what what will actually happen. So we can provide parameters. With that that's something we'll have to figure out. But uh, if we narrow it down to this bit for the Tecton plan plugin, I think this will be pretty nice. So basically, we'll be narrowing it down to tech, the DSL for Tecton. Uh, in Jenkins file, and uh, if that DS in that DSL we say something like Tecton uh, bracket uh, name of the Tecton server, like name of the Kubernetes uh, server, and then under the brackets uh, in the closed brackets we say uh, tech, uh, we say something like push enabled or something. So the Tecton task will get triggered when there is a push or a pull request based on like whatever parameters we provide in the Jenkins file. This is how it could work. Uh, and it, 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 would, it shouldn't be that hard because uh, it's a simple configuration given in the Jenkins file, number one. Uh, number two, uh, we have to apply the tasks. And number three, uh, the Jenkins would already be connected via webhook. So this, this, and so we could, we could just employ these three ideas and probably uh, create a basic DSL out of it. And uh, this is something that the student could do in a short period of time. Would you say, um, kind of 
returning control to the Jenkins file after the task is completed? Yeah. Because I was thinking that one of the things that Jenkins is very, very good at is visualizing test results and outputs from files and stuff like that. Um, that might be a, a, you know, a really nice, you know, you, you run the text on task, it produces some, I don't know, JUnit test results, but you actually want to visualize them in Jenkins or manipulate them or stash them or something. Not quite sure how that would work yet, but. So for me to clarify <laughs> for um, myself, um, the one of the main tasks for the student will be creating a DSL for Tecton in order to align Tecton tasks with what Jenkins needs. Is this correct? Is this a fair way to put that? Yeah, probably. Um, I suppose the scope of the DSL um, would, yeah, the, the, I suppose, yeah, this, you could say like you want to provide, um, you know, every language feature in Tecton, um, a way of invoking that from the Jenkins file, but that, you, you, that may not be required for this. For, for this. You may just need like a limited number of things. Um, again, not sure what they are yet. Okay. Is this helpful for you, Vibhav, in terms of structuring what you would ask for the student? Whoa. What I miss? My laptop just crashed like two seconds ago. I don't know if you guys saw my Gator message I just sent. So I just, I just uh, had to restart. I, I, I missed out when, Gareth, you were asking about uh, would the control be passed back to Jenkins files? I, yes, sorry. Um, yeah, I was, I was asking about I, yeah, whether, we, whether or not we'd see you pass control back at the end to to the Jenkins file so that um, if there were, after, after a Tecton pipeline is run, if there were additional stages or steps that you wanted to run in sort of pure Jenkins using, you know, Jenkins plugins, you could still do that. Um, and a, an example was like archiving JUnit test results or something like that. Um, it'd be quite nice to be yeah, able that, to- that, 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 That's what I was thinking with the DSL. Like yes. if like it should be a way to integrate with Tecton, but uh, but not necessarily move entirely because uh, I'm not sure if Tecton can do everything that Jenkins can do. There are a lot of plugins and stuff which probably uh, uh, which have tasks which probably cannot be replaced entirely. So uh, you integrating with Tecton. Uh, this will allow integrating with Tecton, but not necessarily replace uh, Jenkins with Tecton itself. So that's what that's what we should go for, I feel. So in that in that key, in that sense, uh, the control will be passed back to the Jenkins file, and uh, everything else that runs after the Tecton DSL bit uh, would run. We need to define what uh, syntax and what the DSL and everything can do uh, before we, bef uh, like before we actually started out. Uh, what do, What do you think? Like, 
does this so kara does this designing also go to the uh, student uh, of the dsl and everything it could do designing? i mean in con in conjunction with uh the mentors for sure um and in terms of do you mean when the student's actually doing the coding work or do you mean in advance when the student is designing their project proposal Uh, both both times, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Well, probably we during the proposal, probably during the coding phase. Uh, but actually, come to think of it, mostly during the proposal only. Okay, for the students when they create their proposals, they take. I mean, they're recommended to take the project ideas that are listed. Although they are not actually constrained to them, but it is generally helpful for them to do so. Um, to take the project ideas and then to create their own proposal based on those project ideas. So focusing on what really interests them. And if they're, they should be doing this sort of as a process with the Jenkins community. So, you know, double checking their ideas, mm -hmm. getting guidance from future potential mentors, things like that. So if the student is developing this DSL, I think giving them a pretty strong hand in it is great, but it will be done, you know, under with supervision of mentors and with feedback from the community. Does that help answer your question? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Uh, what? Gareth, have you worked on uh, Jenkins DSL before by any chance? Nope. No, 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 not like this, no. Would Andrew Bear be a good person to get feedback from? Yeah, I think he would actually. Okay. Okay. I might try and pull him in then. <laughs> good. Um, how soon would his involvement need to happen? Certainly when the DSL is being designed and written, it'd probably be good to get his feedback. But I'm just wondering how far in advance of that we should start pulling him in. I think the sooner the better, really. Um, okay. Even if we can just, you know, get him maybe thinking about it a little bit. Okay. Um, Great. You may go away and then come back with ideas. Uh, yeah, that's a later point because I'm not sure how it's. Been, it may have been a bit of a while since he's uh, worked on something like this. Yeah. Okay. Great. That's that's helpful. Thank you for doing the PR, Fibab, because then I can um, point him to this and then, yeah, get get wider involvement, which is good. Yeah. Uh, I I will update this PR. Uh, after the meeting, um, yeah, well, there is a OpenShift client plugin which has its own DSL, uh, which we maintain, but uh, it's been a long time since I've read that code, and there is a little bit of technical debt over there. So, yeah, I, I think uh, getting Andrew's help earlier would be better uh, to see how we should design that part of, of the plugin. Because the way we've done it in the OpenShift client plugin, I feel it could have been done better, but it's it's still like a lot of hard work that goes into it uh, for creating a DSL. Because it is an integration layer at that point. So. For sure. We definitely want it well designed. Yep. Otherwise, it's just clunk, clunky afterwards. So yeah, absolutely. We, we want lots of feedback on the design. Great. So I'll, I'll um, try and get Andrew's feedback on this and, and put him in contact um, with you, Vibhav, and maybe have him come here and speak if he has time. In, in the meantime, <laughs> for today's meeting, is there, is there another thing that we should be discussing? on this proposal, another element. So, uh, so the main thing, main thing we, uh, 
we should discuss is uh, narrow. So, which we already kind of covered was like narrowing down to the scope of the uh, project. So we know that for a fact that cloud events would be a scope where we should discover and like you should be able to publish and subscribe to uh, cloud events. And the scope for uh, the client plugin would be oh, to kind of. All good. Please continue. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's all right. So, a uh, scope of uh, Tecton client plugin would be to, uh, in this case, would be to. Okay, uh, so give me a second. Yeah, so scope of the Tecton client plugin for, for the GSOC would be to uh, create the DSL then. I think that's a good and realistic scope and would also involve a lot of learning for the student. So what I'll do is I'll, um, so initially I, I wasn't understanding like what we should do. Like last week I wasn't understanding what we should do exactly and because just creating a design doc doesn't make sense. Like it needs to have something that makes sense and has a vision. So uh, I, I, what I'll do is I'll try to create a initial design doc for the Tecton client plugin. And uh, Gareth, with your help, uh, I think we can uh, we can sketch it out pretty nicely. What the DSL looks like. What are stuff? Uh, what is the scope of the DSL? For the student that uh, the goals that they need to reach for the, pro the project completion because of the DSL we could do a lot but we should know uh, for the project how much is enough so um, yeah even even something like uh, minimum compatibility with dot tecton folder I think is a good place to start. After that, we can have stretch goals, but I think this, this is a good starting point. Uh, like minimum compatibility with dot tecton folder and doing what uh, tecton as a code already does, but through Jenkins. That sounds like a very good start. So, ah. yeah. I'm I'm just thinking uh, it shouldn't be no, but it will end up being like that. So, so what I'm thinking is basically like currently how Tecton as a code works is uh, it is directly connected to Tecton, and uh, all the ta the task triggering directly happens in Tecton. So the task is triggered in Tecton and all. But with this. Uh, uh, DSL bit, what we would be doing is we'd be using a Jenkins file, configuring configuring that, having a dot tecton folder, uh, or even be, it should be possible for the user to configure whatever pipeline or whatever they want to do in the Jenkins file itself without a dot tecton folder. If there is a dot tecton folder, it will pick up those YAMLs from there, apply it uh, through the tecton client plugin into uh, in tecton, and then do whatever tasks. But yeah, I think uh, with this, it will provide flexibility for the users to uh, use doc tecton or uh, not uh, or not use dot tecton. So, if there is a point where uh, there is a user who says that okay, I've been using tecton as code, but I also need some Jenkins compatibility because I need to do some other tasks, probably tecton can't do. Uh, they should be able to easily integrate into. Uh, Tecton client plugin with the same configuration that, that they've already got. So that would be uh, that would be nice to have. That if if we are able to reach that, we, I think we can keep that as a minimum uh, as a minimal goal for the project. And uh, I'll try to sketch out a, a design doc which tries to cover this. Uh, but I'll 
yeah I'll, i'll try to i'll try to sketch it design doc for this one so i'll take that as an action item for next week awesome thank you vibhav Do we have any more questions so, or Gary, do you have comments on this by any chance? No, sounds good. Um, I've, I've got a meeting on Monday, which will um, decide exactly how much time I can um, dedicate to this. So I'm kind of hanging back a little bit until after that meeting, um, but that should give me some clarity. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, I wanted to ask ask uh, if so. How do we go about uh, proposing an architecture in the cloud cloud? Uh, sorry, in the cloud events work stream uh, work group in CD Foundation on Monday. So Monday we have that we have the cloud uh, work stream meeting. I think. So I just want to ask, like, uh, we already have the design doc and everything. So, do we need anything apart from that, or uh, to kind of discuss the Jenkins Cloud event support? I think bringing it forward to that to that SIG is a great idea, and they may be very interested in it as a, especially as it begins to be. Uh, developed and put into production as a case study. I think that that could be really interesting. Yeah, it, it would be good to have a few more eyes on the uh, design doc. Kara, can you suggest uh, how can we get like more uh, people to review the design doc? Should I post it somewhere, some channels? Um, the the e the email channels where you have posted it is tends to get um, would be the most obvious place to to post it. And you may want to post it as well in Jenkins CI Dev, just because I think there are many more people on that email list. Um, so that might be a good place. And if you are interested although it's, this feels a little early to do it but it would be great to have a blog post on this um at some point i would really like to see that those are the most obvious ways i can think of getting um more engagement from people do you have any other ideas Kara? anything i'm overlooking no i think that's good that's a good start Would the blog post uh, be before uh, the creation of the plugin or after? Certainly after. <laughs> I think it would be great to announce it. Um, to announce it. But if you want more engagement and feedback and kind of get momentum on it, I would certainly be, and you've proposed it as a GSOC idea. I, I think it's quite interesting to talk about both of the plugins that you're working on and maybe discuss what you're aiming for, how you're seeing this ev help evolve Jenkins use cases, improve in certain areas. Um, I, I don't know, I think, I think there's a really good story around that. And if you were interested in writing that blog post, I think it could be very good. And I think if you've got like yeah, future, I think if you've got like future roadmap ideas and sort of thing, like highlighting what those could be like the scope of scope of the plugins in the future could look something like this. Um, but the GSOC proposal is like, it, it might just be a small piece of it, but explain how that fits into the big picture. That's really useful. So big picture is basically interoperability, one word. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's 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 just it's just part of all of that. Uh, 
but it will be nice to see multiple things working together with Jenkins way more easily and in a more standardized way. Yeah. Definitely. And when the work, um, when the plugins are, you know, completed and, and moving forward very well, that this is a great story for the CDF and for the interoperability SIG. Um, so there could be a lot of, a lot of momentum and promotion then there. Um, and for now, I would say definitely bringing these ideas to the SIGs, both the cloud events SIG and the interoperability SIG, it's a good place to get wider feedback and maybe interest. I mean, you never know, people could really dive in, like just depending on who, who hears the message, as it were. Yeah, oh. that's, that sounds good. That sounds good. <laughs> so, um, actually, we have in our chat here, this is a good question. What is DSL? Mm -hmm. And then, is this DSL? And we have a link to um, a Jenkins job DSL. Um, so, DSL stands for Domain Specific Language. And in in my in my understanding of how this works, a lot of the a lot of pipelines have their own domain specific language. Um, Jenkins certainly does, and so, and am I correct in saying Tecton does as well? And then what what um, Vibhav is thinking is that a student would make sort of a specific DSL for integrating um, Tecton tasks within Jenkins. Does that make sense? Is that, is that correct with Bob? Correct me. Yes, that's uh, basically the gist of it. Okay. So it, it's, it's uh, so I'll, I'll still kind of, I, I, I don't know how much I can elaborate, but uh, it is basically that you should be able to talk to uh, find a way to talk to Tecton using the Jenkins Groovy scripts. So Jenkins, through the Jenkins file. So that uh, developing that part of the Jenkins file uh, through which uh, we are able to communicate to Tecton, that is the DSL. Does that answer your question, Sagar? <laughs> okay. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> Good. Any other questions or topics for discussion? Good. Okay, so Vibhav, you. I'm sorry, I spoke over you. Oh no, I I just said my. Okay, so you I, once again have the most action items. <laughs> I'll follow up with Bhatia and see if you would like to present again on the Jenkins um, Kubernetes operator, and um, help you Vibhav. In, in any way I can in moving forward your GSOC proposals in the next week because they go in next Friday. So pretty exciting. By go in, I mean they're submitted to GSOC as part of the application. Okay, that, that sounds good. So uh, this means that, uh, okay, I will try to get the proposals up to the mark as they should be and uh, probably uh, we will uh, we should sing uh, we will sing during the gsoc uh, office meeting right uh, office hours and uh, are we discussing all proposals at that time by any chance before submission All the draft proposals that are on the website now, um, they will go forward as part of our application. What we're doing now is just last minute refining more resources for students, any, any extra um, 
issues for them to look at and mentors, gathering mentors. But essentially all of the Jenkins GSOC proposals as they're up now on that on the Jenkins um, website will be put forward as GSOC uh, project proposal ideas. Does that answer your question? Okay. okay. Yeah. Thanks, Bella. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you very much. Have a good have a good weekend, everyone.